I've never been here before, even though it's just 10 minutes from my house. It's a really beautiful spot. Look at this right here. Has a joey in the pouch as well. Can't really see the joey right now. Oh yeah, you can. Just at the bottom there. How beautiful is that? Here I am thinking that I've got to drive to the Gold Coast or the Sunshine Coast to see nature. I can't remember the last time I saw something that beautiful up that close and the animals are that comfortable. And it's right here in my backyard. So I'm learning to love Logan. Oh, I was going to do a little bit of a recount for this video diary. So I went down to Bingara, which in the last diary I referred to as Bingara, but then I got down there and all the locals were laughing as they always do when you pronounce their place strangely. It was awesome. It was a regenerative festival, like sustainable farming, sustainable living, all the good stuff. And we had holographic kinetics there as well. And it, we got rained out, but that was all part of the fun. It's um, Bingara, Bingara is five and a half hours inland from where I live and a little bit south in, in New South Wales. It's a little country town, but everybody there is really switched on. It seems like that. Maybe it was just everybody there who comes to a regenerative sustainability festival. But it felt like a place where things change for real. And I really enjoyed being immersed in that because I've kind of been isolated in a way with the... Like, I, I want to do all these positive things but I've kind of been doing a lot of it by myself. So it was nice to spend time with people who are also making steps, taking steps towards these positive changes. So we left on Friday morning and didn't get down there till late Friday afternoon. And the rain was so bad that they'd moved everybody from the festival site to the, one of the local venues, the Roxy and we had some had a welcome to country and didge player came out his name was focus how cool of a name is that and then there was a band that played called the hillbilly goats and they it was just like such a kai band they were basically a time traveling band and they took us back to like the 1700s and brought us through time like with the evolution of like bluegrass music and they yeah it, it touches something inside of you when you hear like old music like fiddle music it really does something for me and it was awesome it was like a real family oriented event people of all ages from like three to 103 dancing to fiddle music <laughs> like <laughs> And it was like the band was really theatrical and humorous. Like it was like comedy, theater, music, um, and taking you on a journey through time. And they, were, they would tell you the historical references of where all the different pieces of the music were coming from, um, which might sound boring, like historical, <laughs> but it was actually fascinating and so much fun. And they just, they did such a good job. It was, I haven't seen a performance like that. I've seen like there's other performances that I've seen that have been incredible but they were very unique and I really appreciated it and I was with people that brought me completely out of my shell which was amazing like I felt very social very connected and it was fun to dance like really dance like really move my body like fully like no inhibition 
for the first time and I don't even know how long. I don't know if I've ever moved my body without any inhibition before. So that was, it was worth it just for that. Like Friday night, I was already buzzing. Like I was so happy that I'd gone down to this rained out like <laughs> event where everything was going wrong and the organizers were so stressed, but they were just they never, the smiles never left their faces and they always improvised and found a way and all of the people that were involved were happy to go along with it. Like some of the speakers and people um, could have quite easily just said like, I'm not performing or or participating in these conditions, but the message was more important than like anything else. So they delivered their stuff. So Friday night, dancing, music, connection. Saturday morning, the rain was even worse. It rained all night. And it was, it was like, you know, that fully like every inch of the uh, site was just mud. And to the point where like I was wearing thongs and I was just flicking mud all up the back of my white hoodie. <laughs> but like, oh well, let's just continue. And yeah, I went, heard from some of the leaders in like sustainable agriculture and stuff. And the level of expertise and knowledge, one of the guy's names was Graham. I wish I could remember his last name. You would know him if you're into this stuff. He lives on the Sunshine Coast uh, at Yandina. That's where he's based. Which is funny because I went five and a half hours to see a dude that lives up the road, as is often the case. You find out like it's such a small world and you're meeting all these people and there's these other potentials for connection. Um, and like pretty much <laughs> almost one of the people that I drove down there with is almost his neighbor. So that was fascinating. But he, I got so much out of his talk. He was one of those people that has so much to share that he talks so fast that you've got to really be present and just absorb the information. Like there's just like so much life experience and study and research coming and he just wants to deliver it all and he's very passionate. And I really enjoy somebody who's deeply passionate about the knowledge that they're trying to give people. Like you need this knowledge because it's going to transform the planet to like that level of passion. And it was practical as well. It was, it wasn't all doom and gloom. Like you, like a lot of activism, which already feels like a loaded term that has so many connotations, but a lot of the activism that I see on social media is all doom and gloom and like reactive and like it's all fucked up and we're all doomed to extinction kind of vibe. But it's actually, when you listen to these kinds of speakers that are quite proactive, it's like, there's action that we can take and it's not that hard. And it's actually quite fun and rewarding and it has all these mental health benefits and health, uh, physical well-being benefits. Like you're just going to be a healthier, happier human being if you get involved in like making compost. Like <laughs> and growing your own food, it's going to be more nutritional, which is going to improve your well-being and your mental health. Like it's just like solutions like and, and good things that you weren't aware of instead of just pointing the finger at like these are all the people that are destroying the planet and we've got to stop them like we don't have to stop them we just have to start doing a better job and everybody can participate in that like and in saying that like i'm not running a 300 acre farm right now but yeah <laughs> i'm not taking a lot of action towards that particular goal but i'm taking action in right now in the moment like talking about it and um, helping people heal their trauma so that they can start to focus on like what can I contribute because I feel like we can't contribute anything while we're still stuck in that trauma which is what a lot of that activism is people stuck in their trauma pointing the finger outside of themselves like the world's all fucked because and they're, we're victims and like we can't do anything about it like we've been dealt this shitty hand of cards by our immediate ancestors react, react, react like clear that first so that we can actually be more proactive and deal with these issues in a way that it's actually fun and exciting and like we we can do this like it's actually not that hard it's going to be okay like it's going to be awesome to transform this planet into something really good those are your choices really isn't it like you can be reactive or proactive
So that was one of my favorite talks was that Graham fella talking about sustainable agriculture. And it, there's like so many things in there that are like actually the, a lot of the things that are unsustainable are happening because it's cheaper or it, it's more efficient. But on a, if you look at a long enough timeline, those cheaper, more efficient approaches are actually going to cost those companies and those businesses a lot more. Like it's, like it's literally not sustainable for them to continue on that path. They're going to get worse and worse yields. Their products are going to be less and less nutritional. Like they're just going to have all of these issues if they continue with that path. And if you do things properly, your yields are going to increase. The nutritional value of the food that you're producing is going to increase. Um, one interesting thing that I heard was that like insects and pests will not actually lay their eggs on food that's nutrient dense because it's actually toxic to the insect. Like they, the purpose of insects in nature is actually re nature's recycling. So they will actually look for the shitty, like nutrient, like deficient plants in nature to consume those. Like they'll lay their eggs there to like remove all of the waste if they insects and pests actually find nutrient dense food they leave it alone because it's actually too much for them like it becomes toxic to them because of, like i can't even i'm not going to pretend to understand everything that i heard in like once like from this expert but it's worth looking into if you're interested in it these videos are never intended to be advice or guidance i'm just expressing what i'm thinking and feeling in the present moment it's a little bit different to be doing a recount from previous times usually I'm like what's going on inside me right now I'm just gonna express that but I've had like a lot of experiences so I want to talk about the experiences that I had that are bringing up the stuff that's inside of me right now um, Jackie had her like mobile trailer and it's an amazing setup, so she can do holographic kinetics absolutely anywhere. It's actually really comfortable and nice in there. Like, it's just like as good as going to a fixed location or maybe even better. It's like really pleasant in there. And I did a session in that trailer and that was really awesome. I received a session in that trailer just because I could, like <laughs> worked on a couple of issues and Really, it just, I enjoyed like the opportunity to be a part of that as well, like bringing holographic kinetics to a new festival. Um, I kind of only went down there with the intent to check it out and have a look. So I'd, maybe next year, if everybody wants to do it again, I'll be more involved and more proactive and like start to try to, um, you know, promote it a little bit more and see if anybody's interested and do sessions on more strangers and get some more experience and stuff. But for now, I'm pretty happy with just like going down there to check it out. There was so much more going on. Like if like somebody else went there, they would be talking about totally different things, but it was like, you couldn't be everywhere at once and it was raining and muddy. So like, um, maybe we were a little bit withdrawn, um, like I chilled in the trailer with the heater on and like ate dried fruit and nuts and stuff and just like relaxed. Like it really brought, like it wasn't like the energy of like a sunshine, like warm day, everybody's buzzing kind of thing where I would have socialized even more and connected with even more people and been really out there and like checking everything out. It was kind of like a mission to get to each thing, if you can imagine that, which you probably can. But one of my mates said, like, it's not a real festival if you're not covered in mud. Like, that's what it's all about. <laughs> we ended up staying in this, like, old pub and there was, uh, like, because we were, the intent was to roll the swag out under the stars, but it was just, like, I would be floating around in the mud, in the water. <laughs> and, um, I was down there with two women, so <laughs> not that women can't handle that, but um, yeah, they, they suggested, or Ela suggested, we get some secure, comfortable accommodation, and I couldn't argue with that. But that was a really funny old 
fella there and he was like, I'll take good care of yous and everything. And then um, he's gone to bed and like locked the whole place up so we couldn't get back in. <laughs> so many little like funny little adventures like that. We did eventually get, get in there. Um, I don't know, there's something, you know, it sounds like, oh yeah, <laughs> it rained the whole time and accommodation was bad and all these things. But there's something about making the most of that kind of situation that feels even better than if you do just have a really good holiday or really good experience where everything goes perfectly like that's nice but it f almost feels like twice as good to make the best of a less than perfect situation like you feel like kind of proud of yourself like we just rocked that like made it so much more fun and I guess so many people may not have like they they could have just gone oh no this is the worst I don't want to participate in this um, and just give up and go home and miss out on all of the amazing experiences that were available even like I could have done that <laughs> like I could have I, there were times where I was like really like even just choosing to go down there in the first place when the forecast was looking pretty dire to make the decision to go down there would have missed out on all of those opportunities and experiences and um I think the biggest thing that I'm realizing is I've been very driven by ROI return on investment like I've been thinking about like if I go and invest my time or money into this what am I going to get back and this weekend I just didn't do that I just went I'm gonna go check it out I don't care how much money I spend or how much time it takes or if I can't do all the things that I usually would do on the weekend I kind of just let it all go and I'm glad that I did if you get anything out of these journals please pass them on to anybody else you know who may benefit subscribe if you haven't already leave your comments down below and I'll record some more thoughts and feelings shortly.